In this video, we will introduce the idea behind hash tables. First, we will describe the problem with the help of an example. We will introduce direct tables as a stepping stone and later explain hash tables in more detail. Let's say you are a teacher in a small school. You are teaching to a class of about 30 students. You have a bad memory, so you figure out a way to help you keep track of your student details. You assign a number to each table in your class. You want to develop an application that brings up the student records when you enter a desk number. This is a typical example of the dictionary problem. The dictionary problem is when you have a set of data records, in this case the student details, and you want to organize the data so they can be accessed easily using a key. In our example, the key is a desk number. What sort of data structure should we use to solve the dictionary problem? This depends on three main factors. It depends on the data format and volume we have. Is it binary, text, or structural? Do we only have a few hundred records or terabytes of data? The type of usage we want. Will there be more reads or writes? Will there be only direct random access or range queries? And finally, the type of storage we will use. Will the data be stored in memory, disk, or in a distributed manner? In this section, we will deal with hash tables, which are quite fast for providing random access and are typically suited for in-memory usage. Which data structure would we use for the class of students problem? We only have 30 desks, each with a sequential number. So our key range is only one to 30. Our range is so small, it can easily fit in memory. We don't actually need anything too complex. All we need is an array with its index starting at zero and finishing at 30. On each element, we can have a student record with all the details we need. Here, we are showing an example of three such records. If the class here is not full, some desks will be empty. In such cases, the array position corresponding to those desks will be null. This is called direct addressing. It is quite wasteful, but since our key range is very small, it doesn't really matter. What if now, instead of having a class of students, we're running an entire school? We want to store the current and historical student records. The school is quite small and only admits a few hundred students every year. Let's say we want to identify current and past students by their national ID or passport number. What data structure would we now use to organize our records? In most countries, the national ID or passport number is around nine digits. This means about a key range of about one billion. Direct addressing would be extremely wasteful in this case. We would be using a huge array to fit our range. However, we would only use a few thousand spaces. What can we do? Imagine that instead of creating an array with so many spaces, we only allocate space for the expected number of students, say a few thousands. All we need to do is find a way to map the passport number to a position in the array. This is what a hashing function does. Given a value, in this case the passport number, it returns our index position in the array. We then use this index to store the student record. However, there is a catch. We're now squashing our key space into a smaller limited range we will end up in a situation where two or more keys will map to the same index. This is called a collision. Dealing with hash keys and collisions are the two main tasks of a hash table. In this video, we have introduced the problem of the data dictionary. We have seen a solution to it using direct tables. And finally, we have introduced hash tables.